Well, thank you for a wonderful introduction. Uh, no one had to twist my arm to get me to come to a teen court summit, and I'll tell you why. I have a few grandchildren, and my oldest grandchild, a girl, uh, happened to have a class and get involved in teen court thanks to Charlene Roll. And I used to hear all about teen court from my granddaughter, and she learned so much in the program and thought so highly of it that I became a booster long before I was invited to come here today. What surprises me, frankly, is that there aren't multiple teen courts in every state of the United States. It is a great program. And my hope is that somehow word can spread across the United States and produce more teen courts. It really helps you, as you know, since you're involved, understand how a legal system works. And it helps you learn to deal with very real little problems that kids have. It's, it's just a great program. So I'm delighted to be here. And I think this is what's needed uh, throughout the United States. Now, how many of you know what you want to do when you're grown? Raise your hand if you do. Well, that's pretty good. That, that's impressive. Maybe that's because of teen court. Because I can tell you, I grew up in Arizona on a remote ranch over in the eastern part of the state. I didn't have much of an idea of what I wanted to do. All I knew was cattle ranching, so I wanted to be a cattle rancher. And that, it didn't work out too well. Um, and I wasn't involved at that time in public service because we weren't near a town, so I couldn't be involved in that fashion. And um, I wasn't thinking about law at that time, but I worked hard as a student, and I was privileged to go to a very good university. And as an undergraduate student at the university level, I had a professor who was really inspiring, and you will too, I, it always happens. You have somebody who really will trigger something in you that causes you to go on. Maybe Charlene Roll is one of those people who's already triggered something in lots of students who had her. And because of that inspiring professor who happened to be a law professor, I applied for law school and was admitted. I graduated from law school long before any of you were born. I got out in 1952. And at that time, no private law firm would hire a woman lawyer. There were all these notices on the placement board. Law graduates, call us, we want to talk to you. And my male classmates, 1% of the students in those days, law students in the United States, 1% were women. So I was part of that 1%. And I called all those numbers on the placement bulletin board, and not one firm would talk to me about a job. They said, oh no, you're female, we're not gonna talk to you. And I knew a young woman whose father was a partner in a big firm in Los Angeles, California. And I said, talk to your dad and see if he can get me a job interview. And she did, and he did. And I went to Los Angeles and had an interview with the partner and he looked at my resume. My last name was Day. Well, Miss Day, you have a fine resume here, just fine. But Miss Day, this firm has never hired a woman lawyer, and I don't see the time when we will. Then he said, and I looked very sad, and he said, well, how well do you type? And I said, so-so, medium. And he said, if you can type well enough, I might be able to get you a job here as a legal secretary. But Miss Day, we've never hired a woman lawyer, and I don't see the day when we will. Our clients wouldn't stand for it. Well, I just didn't, I said, thank you very much, but I really don't want to be a secretary. I want to be a lawyer. And I looked around some more, and I discovered that the county attorney in San Mateo County had once had a woman lawyer on his staff. So I thought, well, maybe he'd have another. So I made an appointment to see him, and we talked. 
he was an Italian American. He'd been an immigrant to this country, and he was very nice. And he said, oh, you have a great record here. He said, I did have a woman lawyer, and she did a good job. I'd be happy to have another. But I get my money from the County Board of Supervisors, and I don't have any money in my budget to hire another deputy. And he walked me through his offices and showed me, and he said, I also don't have a place to put another deputy. He showed me there wasn't an empty office or desk. So I went back to the Lazy Bee Ranch, and I wrote him a long letter. That letter is now in the museum in San Mateo County, California. I told him all the things I thought I could do for him if he would hire me. <coughs> and I said, I know you don't have any money, so I'll work for you for nothing until you can persuade the supervisors to give you a little money to pay me something. And I said, I know you don't have space, but I met your secretary, who's very nice, and there's room in her office to put another desk if she'd have me. And that was my first job. No pay, and I put my desk in with the secretary. But you know what? I, it was a wonderful job. It was in public service. I got real, live, legal questions to help resolve and answer. Uh, questions being asked by officials of San Mateo County. And I loved my job, and I had a lot better time than my male classmates who were all working for the big firms and taking depositions and doing research and getting paid. 